the whole reason for this film is to highlight the differences of hunting in the Midwest to hunting out West and why do we drive 15 hours through the night to go beat ourselves up for eight days? You know, I grew up in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, about sixth, seventh grade, then I started getting into wrestling. Uh, my older brother was two years older, he started wrestling. He'd come home, he'd practice moves on me. Once I got into about eighth grade, and then, then I started getting into bow hunting, and then that really kind of took over my passion for the outdoors, was that bow hunting and, and deer. And I never, I never even really thought about elk hunting or the West because it was just something we never really ever did. So what got me into elk hunting is whenever my dad would kill an elk when I was a kid, he would let me come in and pack the horns out. And that gave me like this deep want to be able to go out in the woods and hunt and kill an elk for myself. And here recently I started making elk calls out of shed horns I find right here in Colorado. I mean, growing up in the Midwest, it was all about whitetails and football in the fall. That's all I knew. And uh, it's just such a different game going out west. And I think that's what we all crave when to get a seven day or a 10 day taste of all those differences that we just don't get to experience here in the Midwest. I think what draws me to elk hunting probably more than anything is, yeah, everybody goes out there, they want to shoot an elk, okay? But what, probably what draws me more so than anything is it's an adventure. The adventure is the unknown is what gets me out there, you know? Um, those mountains, they got their own way of doing things and there's nothing that you can do about it. You can't do anything about mother nature. You can try and be as prepared as you can possibly be, but something's always gonna happen that you you just, you just can't prepare for it. It's blowing out in a rainstorm. I got no snacks. <laughs> Mr. Bear over here maybe stuff it all in the bear bag. The difference in hunting here compared to the Midwest, you guys will pick a wind or a cold front to hunt a particular spot on your farm where here five minutes will change everything. You can go from the most beautiful 75, 80 degree day and all of a sudden within 15 minutes the temperature drops 20 degrees, it's pouring down rain and then it gets even colder. Next thing you know it's hailing and the next thing you know it is like humongous snowflakes and it's snowing on top of you. And it, and it just changes so fast. But the, the biggest difference is terrain. You could go a quarter mile and climb a thousand feet in elevation. We simply don't have the rock and the mountains, the hills that you have out west. We're so used to hardwoods or crops, and when you go out west, it's almost like a completely different planet. My dad said this was an elk hunt, not a sheep hunt. I mean, here in your first bugle. That is just something that uh, you can't recreate it. You, you think it gets that tingle in your spine when you watch it on YouTube? Wait until you're laying in your tent and one bugle's 50 yards away in the dark. It's just something that, I mean, I'm, I'm getting all the heebie-jeebies right now thinking about it. The first time you hear it, it'll, uh, it'll submit your obsession with elk hunting, that's for sure. Every single year I go out, I am in just such huge anticipation and waiting just for that first bugle. I just, I just want to hear that first bugle. Just something about bugles that it just, it never gets old, at least to me. You know, when you come out from the Midwest, and you go out there and you hear those bugles and you just hear them just deafening loud, echoing through those pines, it's just, it is just so cool. You ha you can't help but just have a big old smile on your face and you look at your buddies like, can you hear that? Isn't that awesome? When you hear your first one, it's like, that's it. Let's go try to get that bull. And, you know, it just changes your whole mindset for the whole hunt. You go from trying to find elk to, we got one, let's try to get that bull. Um, you know, so get him on film. Let's try to kill that bull right there. And, and it's just, 
it's not the first bugle of the season. It's the first bugle of every day. You look forward to that bugle every day. And um, it's just a whole, it's like a game changer. It's funny how hopeless elk hunting can seem. And I've certainly been on hunts where there hasn't been much luck. I mean, just a lot of walking and a lot of glassing and not a lot of elk. Still have yet to see an elk or hear a bugle. Day four of the elk hunt. We still have not found elk. I, I think I just heard a bugle and did you hear it? No, I didn't. <laughs> you know, it's like you want to hear that bugle so bad. And then just like that, all of a sudden on a dime, you're into a bunch of screaming elk. It makes the times to where, like, like when you do get into them, it's like, that's why it doesn't go old. You just sit there and I'm just like, like a kid in a candy store with a big old smile on the face. And once you're in elk over and over and over, without any warning, all of a sudden, here's your shot. Here's the one chance you drove 15 hours in the car for. Um, and this year we got three of them. in the sun to his back just screaming raking oh my god that was amazing <laughs> I'm running right at us You know, I think you hear how emotional killing an elk can be, and that's just one of those things you don't really understand until you've done it for yourself the first time. There's this realization when that happens of, of how difficult what you just accomplished was. I think you also start to think about all the work you put in in the spring, in the summer, getting ready for this moment just to have a chance. Um, and that chance is only possible because of the public lands we have out west. I mean. You become so thankful for those little areas of wilderness that are left in our country. Oh my gosh. Holy hell. That animal is just so big. Dude, Brent, thank you so much. The very first year I shot a little small, little four by five. But to me it was like, I remember that, I remember when I walked up on it and I found it, I literally, hopped on it and rode it like a horse. I mean, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm hugging it. I was like, I killed an elk. I mean, I just killed an elk. I mean, literally, look at this. I killed an elk. He is just, these animals are so stinking powerful and strong and strong will. He's lived a good life, there's no doubt about it. And I'm very blessed to be the one to be able to take him. Thank you very much, Cliff.
Hey, no problem, buddy. Now it's time to freaking start slicing and dicing. You know, we touched on size, and I, I think that really hits home once you start throwing quarters on your back. I mean, the chunks of meat that are coming off this elk um, compared to a whitetail or any other Midwest animal is not even in the same league. Nope, and... on. No, we'll see. Ah! CrossFit Games, bro. As you trudge up and down the mountain with that pack on your back, I think it really starts to put it in really hard perspective for you. But that's that's part of the adventure. That's kind of the cherry. That's the last chapter um, on one of those hunts. And I think it's one of those things that just, it plays into the experience of having a successful harvest. Hind quarterback, Shep. Yeah, that's all you have. That's all you have, Dave. <laughs> Quit complaining. You know, looking back, there's so many things you take away from a successful elk hunt. I mean, most people are gonna talk about the antlers and, and yeah, those are gonna be in your room or your barn for a long time. There's the meat. There's the hundreds of pounds of organic meat that's gonna feed you and your family for the next year. But more than anything, it's the memories and those relationships formed in the backcountry. I mean, the bond that is created, experiencing the wilderness together is second to none. And I sure hope that until me and my good friends can't climb the mountains anymore, we get to continue building those friendships and, and creating those memories together. One, two, three.